Okay, you got another one of the sort of folding drones. Uh, these, I mean, I've done a whole plethora of these just lately. Um, there, there seems to be a load out there. Uh, this one doesn't have any locks on it, so you just literally uh, pull the arms out, and it's front arms out first, back ones uh, out second, uh, and the opposite way as well. So there's a little bit of flexibility there, so if it hits something, it should get out of the way. This one hasn't got the folding uh, props, as you can clearly see, and it's just got the ordinary props on it, uh, but they are quite flexible in this way, uh, so I don't think you'd do a lot of damage or anything. It's not going to be a powerful quad by any means. Interesting thing is, uh, this one actually takes a micro SD card, uh, so I'm pleased to see that because it means the, the footage should be recorded better and it records it back onto the actual quad itself or it will record it back to your phone if you haven't got a micro SD card in there. It's got a tiltable lens, so it paints points sorry straight forward or you can angle it down down about sort of 45 degrees 60 degrees something like that sort of uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah probably 45 degrees that isn't it uh, so it doesn't actually point right the way down but that's that sort of somewhere like that is usually good for a sort of selfie and getting a bit of a scene in uh, LEDs uh, front of, uh, and on the end of the arms I'll show you that in a second the reason I'm um, sort of moving on swiftly is, you probably see my breath is minus five today it is freezing and there's a slight breeze as well so it's making it even colder so blue hands today uh, <clears throat> A very Scottish blue, apparently. Yes, it's a good, it's a good skin colour. Uh, so I'm going to give this a go. It's got a proprietary battery, but having said that, there's getting a lot of these actual proprietary batteries out there, and uh, they're 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 actually becoming on spares as well. So I'll put any links I can find uh, down in description for you. But they are. But there's a lot of quads out. This, I'm not sure whether they come out of the same factory, but basically the same sort of quad. So uh, it will be how it flies to me. Uh, and this one's a little bit unique because it's got a little tiny transmitter, a lot smaller, about, uh, uh, it's not half the size of the other, it's probably two thirds the size of a normal one, so if this flies nicely, this is a, a good little, you can fit this in your coat pocket sort of thing without any pro problem, and the quad would fit in the other coat pocket, so yeah, it could be fine. You can also fly it on your phone as well, and I'll show you that in a second. So it's a 900 milliamp hour uh, single cell, and you charge it up with a USB uh, adapter here, and, and it's basically just a micro USB into here, and then an ordinary USB adapter adapter into whatever charging station you want to use and you get the cable for that as well. I'll show that in the review. Uh, like I so, the interesting thing on the bottom here also, there's this here which looks like they're going to fit an optical flow on it on like an upgraded model or perhaps the next model or whatever. So I look forward to seeing that because uh, the optical flows work really well. An optical flow keeps it in one position up to about uh, 30 odd feet something like that uh, from the ground it actually scans the ground and it actually picks a point on the ground and then it'll actually keep it in position so it doesn't use GPS so good for indoor flying uh, and outdoor this one doesn't have it on I'm just explaining what I think is coming up next got a little tiny rubber feet uh, on the bottom here uh, and that's it really that's that's our quad so quite good on off switch here I'll show you that in a second. Let's just quickly run through the transmitter itself. So like I say, it's a mini transmitter. You see it in my hand, it's absolutely tiny. Um, but I'm hoping we're going to get good control with it. On this model, the camera buttons here, so st taking stills and video, do not work. Everything is operated by your phone, so you cannot operate the camera unless you've got your phone attached. Even if you've got a micro SD card in there, it won't make any difference at all. It will not record. These ones are your trim buttons uh, for uh, the a direction stick on the right uh, and this one here is auto take off auto land press that it starts and off you go uh, and press that and it stops the motors and it comes down you can also stop and start the motors by pulling the sticks down and out as well you've got uh, auto stop there which is a panic one so literally press that and it will just drop out of the sky and I'll test and show that for you as well it's a mode 2 uh, flight mode which means the throttle is here so we push this up and the quad will ascend pull it down and the quad will descend if you want it to turn you push it to the right and it, that's called yaw and it will turn sort of pirouette turn it to the left and these are all proportional as well it's got altitude hold so because the stick centers automatically so if we're descending and we let go it will stop at that height and the same when we're ascending as well your right hand stick is your direction stick so if I push that forwards the quad will go forwards and that's the, the cameras at the front of the quad basically so that's going to be forwards no matter what orientation it is to me so right is that way and that's called rolling roll to the left is push the stick to the left and backwards is is backwards and these are all on the quad so if it's like that and I push right it will come towards me in effect and these again not points of the compass so you can go in at uh, different angles and you use a 
if you want to do bank curves, you use a little bit of um, yaw and a little bit of a roll as well, and then you do a nice bank curve, which is kind of fun to do. Uh, you've got a flip button here, you press this, and then you choose a direction of flip, and it will do a complete 360 flip, so it literally just go right the way around like that. Uh, this one here adjusts the speed rates, and you've got three different speed rates. It starts in low rate, uh, you press that again, it beeps twice, you go into intermediate, press it again, it goes into high rates, and basically that usually just adjusts how much pitch and roll you've got, so basically how fast it's going to go forwards or sideways, and also how how fast it yaws as well, how quickly it turns. It doesn't usually affect the uh, climb or the descent on it. You've also got a return to home button, which is the same button, but you hold it in for three seconds and then it will come back sort of to home. <laughs> um, I'll show you why I say sort of when we're actually doing the full review. You've also got headless mode on this, so if you press this one in here, the press the right end stick in, it becomes headless. So instead of uh, it being the front of the quad is forward on here it becomes however we've bound it and we're going to bind it that way forwards is always that way no matter what angle the quad is at and that's called headless so it doesn't have a heading so backwards is towards me and like I say it doesn't matter where the quads face it so if it's like that and you press right right is definitely across there it's not something I use uh, and I know some guys do so yeah that's fine it's on there so uh, you use it if you want and that's us all done, I think. So uh, with this particular system, I think you can turn either on. I'm going to put the quad on. It tends to be the most, the most popular. And also, I'm going to get my phone out as well. Okay, I've just attached my phone uh, to the phone holder. And this just clips on the back here, so you don't have to carry it. And you don't have to fly it with your phone. If you don't want to record, you just want to learn to fly, I would suggest you put the prop guards on, which I'll show you when we do the summary, uh, and then just learn to fly. Don't bother with the, the phone to start with. That would be my choice anyway. I'm actually going to bring it over here because I know this is nice and level and I'm going to calibrate it as well before we take off and that's the only bit I didn't show you on the transmitter. So if I pop the quad on first of all and we've got flashing LEDs underneath which you're going to be able to see from an angle as well which is rather good and then you've got these little funny little lights on the front uh, that make it like quite sort of insect or uh, looking uh, with the little nose there as well so uh, I'm not too sure how clear they're going to be but actually today not too bad and I can create a mist across them if I breathe as well so if I now turn on the transmitter uh, and we get the LEDs are flashing away so make sure it's sat down level go up and down on the throttle and then the LEDs will go solid and that means we're bound so we're bound to the transmitter and I'll show you later on how we bind to the actual uh, phone itself so to calibrate it uh, and this is going to calibrate the gyros on it uh, so that it flies level now you only really need to do this uh, if it's if you've had an accident or anything but I'll just show you how to do it and sometimes it's a good idea to do it because they might not have set it right in the factory so pull both the sticks down and in, you get a beep off the transmitter and you get the little flashing LEDs and that means it's calibrated. Don't move it while it's calibrating, uh, certainly not, to go, and don't have it at an angle. If you like that, then it will think that is level. So The quad will have set up a Wi-Fi hotspot and all we need to do now is just log on to that. Now, I did turn this on inside just to check everything was working, so it might... Uh, connect automatically it's connected to it there as you can see you've got wi-fi 720p oh by the way the camera is 720p so it's going to be 1280 by 720 when you're recording on the actual uh, quad and i would imagine when you record on the uh, phone itself it'll probably only be 640 480 that's what they tend to do but uh, i'm always happy to be proved wrong with these things perhaps it's going to be better than that and the app we're going to use is one of my favourites, Wi-Fi UFO. Uh, it's a great little app, uh, and I've done a full video on how to use this app. Whoa, well, that's nice. <laughs> oh, it's a nice wide-angle lens as well, so if I put my head cam up there as well. Yeah, that is pretty good, actually. Uh, yeah, nice. They're getting better on these uh, cameras at this price as well. It's just incredible. Right, so I'm going to start the video, and like I say, these buttons don't do anything, but they will make the LEDs work, but you won't be recording anything. The only way you know you're recording is you get this yellow glow on it. So We're all ready to go, so I'm going to press the auto takeoff, auto land, and we're up and away. Like I say, there is a breeze going that way, as you can see. So, yep, no matter what direction I put the quad in, it is going that way. <sighs> Sorry, my breath. <laughs> I can see my breath as easy as anything. Oh, this is going to be quite nice. I quite like it. The yaw on it is nice and smooth. Now, usually, or a little while ago, you couldn't get a cheap, smooth running um, quad on the yaw. Actually, the LEDs have stopped flashing as well on the front. This is actually quite smart. <laughs>
Yeah, that I like the FPV. I will we'll give it a little go with FPV. So let's try a flip. Yep. Uh, so you just literally, like I say, the wind's got to keep blowing it that way. Press this button, choose a, a direction. There we go, and it gives it, it holds altitude pretty well actually. I'm just going to have to constantly fight that little breeze. This will catch anything in the breeze, by the way. So that's it in low rates. That's intermediate, as you saw it sort of pitched in a bit more and rolled in a bit more. It's definitely getting a bit more of a move on. Wee, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's nice. I haven't still got, yeah, I've still got gentle control on the yaw as well, which is good. Well, that does actually get a move on. I'm just going to do a quick range test. I know over there is sort of 50 metres. It should do 50 metres, no trouble at all. Ah, the Wi-Fi's breaking up a bit, you'd understand that. Yep, we're definitely over 50 metres there. The Wi-Fi's just about holding. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Well, I can fly it on it, so... <laughs> Having said I can fly it on it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> It's a little bit laggy for full FPV, especially when you've got a big house right in the way. Also, that wind's not helping it because it's just literally blowing it. Just gently, really gentle. It's certainly not helping it. But yeah, that works pretty well. Let's do a quick selfie. It's a bit twitchy in high rates. Uh, not in a bad way. I quite, I quite like it, but if you want it to do sort of camera work, which, I mean, this is not really a camera bird. It's just a little selfie. Uh, you know, it's not going to shoot 4K or anything, silly. But if you wanted to, you know, I think you'd need to be in low rates for it. Yeah, that's going to be much easier for setting up a camera shot and everything. Yeah, that's much nicer. We're going to stop that for a second. There we go. That's good. Okay, so try headless mode. Whoops. I pressed something in there, I don't know what I pressed. Uh, good, try headless mode. There we go. Oh, so, sorry, I was pressing headless mode there. So let's just up the rates. That's it. So forward is always forward away from me, backwards towards me, right and left, and anything in between. So you can go angles if you like. You can be spinning it as you go left or right or anything. I just, I've not really found a big use for it, but there's people out there use it, so it's fine, it's there. Let's try the return to home, just going to hold that down for three seconds. There we go, it's going home that way, <laughs> somewhere over there. Uh, and, and the thing is with ho return to home, it, it's sort of in a plane of where you took from, sort of that way. Uh, so we're going over there, I reckon, because if I press return to home here, I don't reckon it will go over there, which is literally where we took off. There we go, it's just going to head straight into the house. There. So it, it makes no, it's not really very useful uh, unless you flew directly away from where you were. That would be the only way that would work. So we've got an emergency stop, as I say. I'm just going to hover near me and then hit that button. You have to hold it for a couple of seconds, it literally kills the motors. Uh, uh, the other way of starting it, as I said, you can pull the two sticks down and out. Now that's you have to hold the, sorry, <laughs> that's really weird, <laughs> so we'll start them, oh it did, yeah, you have to just hold it there for a few seconds, a couple of seconds, otherwise it just sort of blips them, and then just give it some throttles to take off, the other way of landing is you can just literally bring it in and just land it, I think it, when it's finished descending, it will then kill the motors if you've got the throttle right off like that, you can obviously auto take off and auto land, so that would be a good way of hand, hand launching because you can't really do the two stick operation. And then just press the auto land. You can choose where it's going to go. So I'm choosing where. And if you want to cancel that, all you have to do is give it a bit of throttle and off it will go. So I'll just show you that. So I'm going to go auto land again. Just give it a bit of throttle and it just cancels it. You're back in control. You're back in control. So. That all flies pretty well, actually. Oh, go on. Let's just try a little bit of FPV. Let's just try it just in intermediate rates. I think that might be a bit easier. So, literally, just going to try and fly FPV. I'm not. I'm looking totally at the screen here. I cannot see the quad. It's totally the other side of some thick trees. Actually, yeah, it is flyable. It is flyable. 
This is where I usually louse it up. So. <laughs> there you go. Obviously, you see, I'm just looking totally away from it. There we go. Yeah, so it, it is flyable on FPV. Hey, that is not bad. I've had a lot worse than that. <laughs> I've got a lot of trees around my garden to uh, have incidents with. So. Let me just come back onto line of sight. Ah, we've got flashing LEDs, which means we're running low on battery power. So we should bring it into land. We usually get quite a bit more uh, time out of it as well. Like I say, that breeze is just picking up. You can see it just, it's just constantly blowing it that way. <laughs> Don't have flashing LEDs and sit it over water. It's never a really good idea. So that is a nice controllable little quad. I like that. Yeah, I like the three rates. They're really different as well. So I'm going to uh, run this battery out. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just... Uh, Swap it over onto the phone and I'll show you how we can fly it on the phone. So, so just going to land it down, going to turn off the transmitter. And as I said, the quad set up a Wi Fi hotspot and we're already bound up to it. If you weren't going to use the transmitter, which you don't have to use, you could just literally do this little bit turn on these controls and then then you've got full control we've got altitude hold on this one so we flick this one on as well uh, and then we're ready to go so just literally press that i don't know how much time we're going to get out of this battery uh, we will soon see oh the other thing i'll do just while we're doing that i'll pop the whoops the micro sd card out uh, and then we can uh, see what the recording back to the actual phone is like there we go and then this is different because you've got actually got the count up on it now so hopefully we've got enough power just for a little play with it. All the controls are exactly the same. You've got headless mode on it. And like I say, I've done a full review on how to use this app. So I'll put a link down in the description for you. That's in low rates, intermediate, and then high. And it is very flyable with very cold hands. <laughs> that is absolutely fine, actually. That's nice. It's not as fast as when it's actually on the transmitter. But I don't think it's far off, actually. That's nice. It flies really smooth on the app. That's good. You can do uh, flips and everything. It won't do a flip, I would imagine, purely because the battery is getting low. You can fly this on your gyro. Uh, I quite like this with the, with the kids. Well, the kids like this, grandkids like this. So you can still control your uh, up and down uh, with your throttle. You can yaw it and everything. Whoa. Oh, there we go. The battery's gone. Uh, I tell you what, I'll get that recharged and I'll show you fully through the app afterwards. that makes make more sense. Okay, Scotland is Scotland. <laughs> just charge up the battery, which has taken a couple of hours. Now the winds has sort of picked up and then it's dropped down, but the temperature has gone up to five degrees. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. So we're going to pop the quad on again. As I said before, you get the flashing LEDs. We're just going to log on to that um, Wi-Fi hotspot that it will have set up. I don't know if I said it before, but you, you don't use up any of your data roaming or anything. It's just purely a link between uh, your phone and the actual quad itself. So, and there we go. And then just back into the app again. There we go, we're live. It's, it's actually quite quick, this one. Yeah. Quite impressed with the, the Wi-Fi, and it is pretty good, I think. So we've still got flashing LEDs, as you notice, until we actually turn on the controls because we've got no controls here so we would just be using it as a recording medium uh, so press that and now the LEDs have gone solid you can calibrate it and everything uh, same as we did before you can do everything on the app basically that you can do with the actual transmitter uh, but obviously you just don't have to carry the transmitter small though it might be and I cover all the functions of this in the uh, video I did on how to use it and I put a link in description as I said for you before. So uh, I'm going to turn that off for a second, put on altitude hold because it's an altitude hold model and then we can press the auto takeoff there. I would really probably go, if that wind kicks in the way it has been, it's been swirling around uh, and it's gone calm now, it's typical, typical Scotland. So that's a full backward pitch, <laughs> full forward pitch. It's actually got more more forward than it has backwards actually, but it shouldn't do. There we go, and that's in low rates. Yeah, so it's literally, oh, it's a bit of breeze, that's what's got it. That's intermediate, and that's high. So it's actually, I like this on the actual transmitter. It actually has three definitely different uh, rates, which I like. I like the fact that you can have a play as 
and, and learn how to fly in the low rates and then move on from there. The wind is absolutely blowing this everywhere. <laughs> I haven't started the video, let's start that. Yeah, so I might walk, you can see it popping up and down there, that's the uh, altitude hold really struggling. Whoa, in the wind. It really is a windy day. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to control it. I don't think it's got enough go in it to actually fight the wind. <laughs> I just wonder what on earth it's done wrong. <laughs> oh, it's really difficult to hold. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Honestly, it's not that strong a breeze, you can sort of see, but it, it's a big lightweight, it's sort of a big area, and it's a lightweight quad, so it, these things do happen. Now, I just did that as a full dynamic test for you. You can see where it whacked into the back of the greenhouse there, which we won't tell the missus about. Uh, uh, we, uh, it's just knocked the uh, arm back round, so that's rather good. And it hasn't actually lost uh, its connection. Sometimes it does, oh, I've just pressed that and turned that off, sorry. But it hadn't lost its connection there. There we go, yeah, so it's still all good. So we'll see how it flies. If it doesn't fly right, then we can just calibrate it. But let me try and quickly get this review finished for you. So on with everything as we did before. We'll get up the rate straight away, because then at least it's done a fighting chance. Let's see if it'll flip. Yep. <laughs> and it flips in every direction, which is good. Some of them don't. Uh, I, I'm really not that bothered about the flippy bit. I, I sort of think it's something that you do when you first get a quad and you want to see how it flips but after a while you realize you're just pressing a button and doing no input or skill sort of thing so it's uh oh it's actually locked off on that look at that you press that again to cancel it oh i've never had that on one before if i stay here i might be out of the wind enough but it's certainly controllable it's very nice and controllable and my hands are still absolutely freezing, even though it's five degrees. That wind is making it a little bit cooler. <laughs> like I said before, uh, I'm not too sure how much I would have covered before, to be perfectly honest. You can fly it on your gyro, so you simply push that, put that one on, and then you can fly on your gyro. Uh, like I say, uh, the grandkids love this, because you, you literally just tilt the phone forward, it will go forward, backwards. You can do it at diagonals as well. You can rotate it, and what I do with the kids is get them to rotate as well with it and then it's nice and easy to fly, otherwise it gets a bit confusing because if I turn it around towards me and now if I put it forward, it's obviously going to come forward for the quad so it's going to come towards me so I actually find it easier to show the kids that way the other thing you could do of course is, whoa, I don't know what way I bound this is you can put on the headless mode yeah, so that's forward, backwards, so it won't matter if I turn it around that way, that is still forward and that is backwards, right and left and you know, anywhere in between, so funny little sort of 45 degrees or, or whatever you want. You can rotate it as you do that as well. Oh well. So just take that off. And then take that off as well. And that's the drift on it. That's how much we get in the breeze that way. That's why at full pitch, even in high rates, that's all it could achieve. That is really struggling. <laughs> But it's pretty good actually, I'm quite impressed with it. Yeah. And nice and controllable. I mean, and especially for a, with an app as well. This app is pretty good. I mean, this one's been going ages. Let's try to see if we can fly a little bit of FPV without trouncing it. There we go. So, just looking at. Yep, so I'm looking at the screen here. Whoop! It's not the best FPV. I mean, that none of them ever are, to be honest. But it works, well, here comes a treat. Well, some of them, when you get like a three second delay with them, <laughs> I have had one with a three second delay, so <laughs> you hit hit the tree, and then a couple of seconds later, your quad's on the floor in bits, uh, and a couple of seconds later, you get the image up on your screen saying, oh, by the way, there's a tree coming up. Uh, even a second delay is a drastic amount. So, you see that's just wind, because it's just, whatever way I face the quad, it wants to go that way. And literally two hours ago, it was blown that way. <laughs> That's Scotland for you. There we go. That's sort of everything done. There isn't a mission one on this one, which I'm pretty pleased about. I can't remember them being one. I'm just checking that there isn't. You've got an auto land. You've got a, a stop as well on this as well. You can just auto land. Uh, you can just land it just by pulling the throttle off, like we did before. So like I say, all the controls are very much the same. And then it will kill the motors. Press that and we're up again. 
you've got an auto white land on there and again same as before you can just control where you want it to go if you want to cancel it just simply give it some throttle and it will cancel it you've got an auto stop as well emergency stop as well so I'll just show you that as well and then i think we're all done so i'm going to go in and get a nice bowl of soup how about that so just literally press that button and it kills it instantly so if you're up high and you get into a problem you can press that but you're likely to damage your quad that's the only thing uh, but it's better to get your quad down uh, than not tell you one thing we'll just do just have a quick go with the camera pointing downwards and actually i'll take a quick still as well i just to see how we get on shall we oh no <laughs> No matter what I gave it there, it's the wind has caught it. <laughs> and like I say, this isn't much of a breeze, so if you're thinking of going out, you know, when it's howling. <laughs> uh, this is another problem with quads, grasses and stuff like that. An absolute nightmare on the motors. Kill your motors as quick as possible. Hit that emergency stop if you're going to do anything like this. And it's still free, free moving, so that's good. That's a really good sign. If they're not, that could be your motor gone. So. So, and, and take good care of your, your motors and the gears and everything that they run on. There's little gears in there, in between two. There we go, just in, in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Uh, but this one's actually got bound in there, so I might have to go and cut this one off. You see that wasn't coming in at any sort of speed? No, it's come off. There we go. And that's exactly what can happen. If that would have got in where the gears are, you'd have stripped the gears out in a, well, less than a second. Okay, so clean that all up and that's all fine and all the all the props and everything's spinning freely. So if it's not, stop. Because <laughs> all you're going to do is strip it out. There, there really are little plastic gears there, so just be a little bit careful. So I'm just going to see whether I can have that camera pointing down and see how we get on. Well, uh, as you can see there. <laughs> so this is a brilliant... <laughs> Look, I'm covering everything on this review. So it's actually drifting off to the right, which means... Uh, left, sorry. So I'm going to calibrate it and then hopefully I can show you the difference and, and what the calibration does for you. So press this one down here. You've got a little compass, uh, well, sort of gyro. Uh, it's a gyro, sorry, there. Press that, get the flashing LEDs. And that means, should mean we're calibrated. And let's see whether it flies any different. Yeah, see, that sorted it out. So any drifting on that now is probably going to be down to the breeze. So if we turn it around, it's still going that way. No matter what way I turn that, that is facing that way. So I'm going to pop that up into 60%. And we've pointed the camera angle down, as I showed you a second ago. I'm getting flashing LEDs, I'm not surprised. This has been a long review for it. Poor little thing. They're just going to go an overhead one. I was going to say, I don't usually have a head of hair. It's, it's a nice warm hat. That wind is just catches, so it's quite difficult to keep it pitched against it just right, sort of thing. So you do your sort of gutter inspect inspections and stuff like that. Oh, that wind's just really mucking it about. There's hardly any breeze. I mean, this is this is quite normal. Uh, this sort of level of quad you are not going to get. It's not going to fight much against any breeze, sort of thing. There we go. It's flying fine. I'm going to bring that back down because I know I'm going to wind up with it stuck up on the roof. But you could do your gutter inspections and stuff like that. I know there's somebody who follows the channel and he actually does that quite often. Oh, there we go. And if we just leave it flying, it should just come down and descend when the battery runs out. So I'll just do that. I don't think I've ever done it, actually, to be honest, on a review. So it'll be interesting. There we go. I'm touching nothing here. Let me see how much longer we've got of that flight as well. And the movement is just the breeze is just coming across. There we go. So I'm touching nothing, nothing at all. So if you run out of power, and the same would happen if you ran out of range as well, it would just come down slowly, drop to the ground. Doesn't usually kill the motors, uh, which is quite good. Gee, that was a long review. So I'm going to make this a really quick summary. So it comes in a really neat little box. It's not that big, and everything packed into it. And this is everything out of the box. Uh, I'm quite impressed with it. I must admit, you probably got that impression, and the fact I spent so long reviewing it and put it through all its tests. Uh, the transmitter was superb, even though it's really tiny compared to the normal size ones. It is absolutely 
absolutely brilliant uh, and the control on it is is excellent I, I have no problems with it whatsoever uh, just pop the mobile phone holder on the top there and that will virtually hold any size mobile phone I would say uh, so uh, all that end is perfect I would say the actual quad itself the th fold out as you saw it's been through a few crashes and absolutely not a mark on it and it picked up and flew perfectly even showed you how to calibrate it after a crash and showed why we calibrate them uh, if it's drifted around that's the first port of call the actual uh, camera itself I thought was good for what it is it, it is what it is this thing is under 40 quid so uh, I think it's pretty good and if I find any deals or anything on it I'll put a link down in description the uh, the camera angle tilt worked pretty good uh, and you've seen the footage if you restore it on here on the micro SD card it's 1280 by 720 if you uh, store it back on your phone so you don't have a micro uh, SD card in here it's 64480 so um, you know th that's just the way it is uh, but I like the fact that if you haven't got one in it, it still records so I like that the prop guards you get four prop guards if you're new to flying not only do I recommend you don't use your phone to start with? I recommend you pop these on as well, or if you want to fly indoors, pop them all around. You've got a bit of protection there. It's not going to hurt when it hits your ceiling, not going to damage anything, hopefully, when it hits anything. But like I say, the props are pretty flexible as well, and they just simply pop off. You've got uh, four spare propellers with it, uh, and as you can see, I haven't even replaced the propellers after those crashes. Not a little bit, of, not a bit of damage on it. Uh, and these little uh, caps here just uh, basically blanking ones that go in there for where the prop guards go I didn't bother putting them on because I don't actually see any sense in them you get a USB charger so you plug that into the actual battery itself uh, and that goes just in the side there when it's charging you get a red LED on it when it's fully charged the LED goes off and it takes about an hour and a half to two hours to charge uh, but it does give you that eight or nine minutes of flight though it's a, a proprietary battery for it honestly there's getting a lot of manufacturers producing these so that you'll be able to pick up you know, packs of these pretty soon if I find anything again I'll pop that down uh, in uh, description for you and it just sits in there really nicely everything on it is really good it isn't expensive uh, you know I wasn't expecting too much from it but I've actually been really pleased with it you get a couple of uh, instructions you get the one for the app and it runs through everything and like I say I've done a complete separate video on how to fly using this app and I'll put a link in description for you so you can go and check that out but to be honest with the length of this review you've wound up with me covering it anyway I'm pretty sure uh, and then uh, the actual instructions themselves are really good all in English all the call outs are correct uh, everything's nicely done runs through all the basics of flying and then goes even on to uh, you know troubleshooting and everything and then all your spare parts on the back so you've probably got the idea already uh, and I don't uh, hide what I'm uh, feeling when I'm actually doing a review uh, I actually like this it flew really well I like the camera the FPV was brilliant I could actually fly it with proper FPV uh, it's like I say it's not going to be the best for what it is but actually it was flyable you know I mean I was completely out of sight of it and I could still fly so I like it if it's something that you're after or even if you're new to flying uh, it could be a really a really good way of starting so thanks for staying with me right the way through this long review uh, but I hope you've learned a bit from it um, I've certainly learned a lot of, uh, don't fly very lightweight quads in strong gusty winds so hope to see you on the next flight mm -hmm.